Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For anyone who is new, my name is Julia and I am a third year medical student. Be sure you are subscribed and tuned into all the latest content and hit that notification bell so you are alerted when I post new videos. So today I wanna to talk about a very important topic, not only to the field of medicine, but also to me personally. And what better time now that it is February, which is Black History Month. So that topic is the representation of black and African Americans in the field of medicine. As a black American myself, and someone who will eventually be a physician in the United States, this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, so I'm very excited to talk about it today and hopefully um, inspire some of you to continue on the path if you are or join the path to medicine if you are not. You guys can see I'm wearing my Melanin Doc sweatshirt today, so I'm representing. And yeah, so as you may or may not know, only 3% of doctors identify themselves as black or African American in the United States. This is compared to the 13% population which identifies as black or African American. So as you can clearly see, 3% is well under 13%, meaning that blacks and African Americans are underrepresented in medicine. We are not equally or equitably represented in this field. And there are many, many reasons for that. And this video isn't meant to be a history lesson, but we all know um, the struggle that has been faced by blacks and African Americans in this country to get equal footing in such a way Way to even become a physician and a lot of those barriers are still in place and I've discussed them in my other videos but we all know standardized testing access to resources socioeconomic status these are all things that are obstacles for blacks and African Americans to even become a physician in this country and another layer that is not often enough discussed is that even within the 3% of black doctors in this country the percent of black American doctors who would be the descendants of slavery in this country, um, black Americans, the number is even more alarming. We are well underrepresented even within the black doctors. So it begs the question, what are we as a country doing to propel and prop up blacks and African Americans to even become in a position to become doctors? But more importantly for me as a black American, what is this country doing to prop up those people who were wronged by this country as a result of slavery? But once again, um, you know, I'm not trying to get on my history and um, black American soapbox because we are all in this fight together and I wanna talk more so about solutions. But before we go on to addressing actual solutions and how we can boost um, the amount of blacks and African Americans in medicine, I do wanna talk about why it is important. And I know we all know that diversity and inclusion, it matters, right? But let me give you some concrete examples. So as I stated, I'm a third year medical student and I've had my fair share of experiences with peers and faculty and healthcare staff that simply are not culturally competent. And it's disappointing and it's disheartening to share, um, but I just don't feel as though people really understand the importance of being tolerant, of being open-minded to individuals and populations who do not look like you, and more importantly, in being anti-racist. Not just being non-racist, but actively fighting racism and white supremacy in medicine and healthcare, a field that has a very, very tainted history with black bodies. So when we ask why is it important to diversify medicine, because diversity is freaking important, but also statistics show, there is research that actually shows that it is better for patients, specifically black and African American patients, when they are cared for by a physician that is of their same race. This is by no means saying that a non-black doctor can't care for a black patient or do so well, no. It's simply saying that generally across the board, patient outcomes are better when they're cared for by a doctor of the same race. And this could be for a variety of reasons. A few that come to my mind immediately are simply the level of comfort and trust trust you guys especially when we're talking about very vulnerable underrepresented communities trust is huge like trusting what your doctor says and trusting that they have your best interests at heart can really determine whether or not you're going to have a good or bad outcome and generally i think that black patients 
trust someone who looked like them, trust a black doctor. In my personal experience, there have been countless times, you guys, where I have walked into patients' rooms, black patients' rooms, and they were not only surprised that I was the medical student on the team as a black person, which we also gotta work on because, you know, black people can be doctors too. You know, we are underrepresented, but we are coming up, and I'm going to make it my mission that we continue to increase the number of black doctors in our nation. So the surprise factor, while I absolutely understand it because we do not often enough see individuals who look like us at the level of the doctor, please respect that we are making it to that point and we are going to make sure that individuals who look like us continue to become doctors. So let's undo a little bit of that surprise factor and assuming that a black person walking in your room to treat you is a nurse or you know isn't part of the healthcare team because we are. But once patients do realize that I am a medical student, that I'm going to be actively involved in their care, there's always just that bond, you know, that kind of like automatic like trust. And you know, it's not often said, it's not verbalized, but you know um, that it's there. It's it's the eye contact, it's the they they're looking at you when the doctor is explaining something. It's when the team leaves the room, they ask you, hey, I have a question real quick. And I'm the one asked the question because I'm the only one who looks like me on the team. These are the little things. These are the little nuances that cannot be cured by anything other than continuing to diversify our workforce. So once again, when asked, why is diversity important? Why is having black doctors important? It's for these reasons. Not only are patient outcomes better, but patients want to be cared by people who look like them, who they feel has their best interest at heart. And not saying that this can't be you know, done by anyone who doesn't look like them, but the research shows that patients have better outcomes. So let's actively work to diversify the field. And j let's just be equitable. Like, let's be equitable. There should absolutely be more black doctors. There is no reason why we should continue to be underrepresented. And let me also say that black doctors are not the only ones who are underrepresented. Latino populations, certain Asian populations are also underrepresented in medicine. So this is not just exclusive to black and African American doctors. However, we are in Black History Month, baby, and we're talking about black people. All right, so solutions, you guys. I'm a very solutions oriented person. Of course, I do think that the problem needs to be addressed and reconciled, but let's not get too hung up on that stuff and delay solutions. So let's talk about what we can do to increase the number of blacks and African Americans in medicine. I have made it my mission since I was a pre-med student, but especially now that I'm a medical student, to actively work on this problem. Number one, pipeline programs. You guys, there are so many programs throughout the nation that partner with middle schools and high schools and medical schools and help to funnel students young students from wherever they are into the field of medicine that get them exposed to the career path and help them boost up their resumes, get them exposure and all of that to help garner that, you know, interest in medicine. Something I hear a lot is that, oh, young people aren't interested in medicine. They don't wanna become doctors anymore. I absolutely refuse to buy into this narrative. I'm out there in the schools. I'm out there talking to young people and they are absolutely interested in medicine and becoming nurses, doctors, whatever. The thing is that we are not addressing the problem of helping those individuals get to the point where it's actually a reality. I hear Hear young people say all the time I want to be a doctor they're little kids you know when you're little the first things you want to be are a lawyer a doctor you know a policeman let's not let's not buy into this narrative that kids don't want to be doctors the problem is that you you can only be what you think is possible and at some point kids are realizing that eh, this may not be possible so it's it's off the table. So they stop saying, I wanna be a doctor because you don't hold on to um, unrealistic dreams, right? But the thing is, is that they are realistic and we need to encourage our youth to continue on that process and help them and rebuild these structures that are not supporting them in that journey. I know that the landscape of medicine is not easy. I know that college, medical school, debt, all of these things are on people's minds. 
mind when trying to kind of figure out their career path, but please put all that aside. If you hear a young person say that they want to be a doctor, do whatever is in your means to make that happen. I always say, what good is passing the ladder down if people fear heights or don't know how to climb? Come down from your position and show them the way up. These youth might need to be shown the way up and have mentors and support to help get them to their goal. Pipeline programs are a great way to do that, to get them exposed and get them in the door early and continue to foster that interest. However, it might just be an issue of people not being aware of pipeline programs and that things like this exist that they can get their kids in. So, so just please, you know, keep your eyes and ears open for a different opportunity that introduce medicine to the youth. Second solution, mentorship. You guys, I cannot emphasize enough the value of good mentors. Mentors who have gone through exactly, you know, what you want to go through and who are at the place that you want to be. They have so much knowledge and value and resources that they can share with you to help you on your journey there. However, it is a two-way street. You know, people who are in their career, people who are busy, they don't always have the time to look for people who need help. And it is on, you know, students, on mentees to seek out good mentors. There are so many people who reach out to me for mentorship and guidance and advice. And, you know, I try to do as much as I can. I wish I could clone myself so that I could help more people. But my time is also very limited. And one thing I refuse to kind of compromise on is to be a bad mentor. You know, that would be counter productive to the goal. So this is exactly why I started my YouTube channel because while I may not be able to help everybody individually by chatting with you or having Zoom calls with you, but I can post a video and anybody who wants to watch it or find value in it can watch that video or leave a comment and I try to answer the comments. So that is kind of the way that you guys can find mentors. YouTube University is a whole place in and of itself that is full of knowledge and resources. So speaking not only to the mentees um, who are looking for support, but also those of you out there who want to mentor or want to help, um, consider ways in which you can give your time um, to students who need it or individuals needing guidance, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's in a mass type of approach, something. But if you have made it, I will go so far as to say that we have an obligation to ensure that the individuals who look like us, who want to be where we are, that we open those same doors that we had opened for us, for them. And lastly, institutions need to walk the talk, you guys. If they say that they care about diversity and inclusion, if they wanna put it in their mission statement that they are committed to creating diverse environments and an inclusive workforce, then you need to hold them to that. Words are just words without actions put behind them. And if there's anything that the last year in particular has taught us is that people talk a lot and don't walk the walk. So hold your institution accountable. Don't be afraid to ask those important questions about the diversity of your medical school class, your faculty or you know workforce of your hospital. These things need to be pressed. And diversity is unfortunately just one of those topics that people talk a lot, but unless their foot is held to the fire, they might not act on. So let us all be a part of the solution and the change and actively work to increase the number of black and African-American doctors in this country. We will all benefit from it. Most importantly, our patients. So before I wrap up this video, you guys, I also wanna quickly shout out a scholarship opportunity. I know that money is huge when we're talking about medical school and college and becoming a doctor and all of that. So my sister and I have a nonprofit organization, the Carter Family Foundation, and we actively work to better the youth um, by providing opportunities in education, in mentorship, and in community outreach. As a part of the nonprofit, we established a scholarship program in 2019 where we award under represented minority college and graduate students with scholarships to help them and support them in their journey. You do not have to be pre-med or on the road to medicine to qualify. There are some criteria that we have listed on our website, but I quickly wanted to shout out, you know, this opportunity for any of you college students, graduate students who may be watching that might need an extra bit of financial support. So I'll put more details about the scholarship in the description box below and please check out our website 
um, and pay attention to the deadline in which to apply by. And also please follow the directions for the scholarship application and be sure that you submit all of the materials requested by the deadline. So that is our way to, you know, pass the ladder down and hopefully support students who who need it and who look like us who are going through similar processes and journeys that we have and to show you guys that we are here for you, we hear you, and we are here to support you. So that's it for this video, you guys. I hope that you got something out of it that you were encouraged, inspired, or hyped up to be a part of change or something. Um, but please leave a comment below if you have any thoughts, questions, reactions, anything. So solutions that people can um, follow. Be sure to like this video, give it a thumbs up if you got value out of it, and subscribe, turn on that notification bell to tune in to all the latest content. Love you family, see you guys next time.